Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is time for reflection. Our time for re reflection leader today is Most Reverend Leo Cushley, the Archbishop of St Andrews in Edinburgh. Presiding officer, dear friends, I am grateful for this opportunity to address this distinguished group of representatives in our nation's ancient capital. I have not lived in Scotland uh, for a long time, and so it's a wonderful thing to return and to have the chance to stand here in our new parliament and to consider all that has been achieved here in so short a time. We hear it said that life is sacred without thinking about it too much, but it remains impressed upon how we relate to each other as a society. And that is why it is in the bedrock of the laws of our country. When we look at Scots law, we can see the various origins and influences upon it, and one of them is Christianity. Of course, that pleases me as a Christian, not because it makes the law biased in my favour, but because I know that Christians start from the premise that all life is sacred, irrespective of creed, or any other accidentals, and because they believe, as many do, that all creation starts in some way in God. Law and legislation appear naturally too. Wherever there are two or three people in one place, there is necessarily interrelationship and interaction. There are rules of conduct. There springs up a way of behaving that is agreed upon. These are the beginnings of human society, and human society naturally develops rules of conduct. These become human laws, useful for a season, but inevitably, occasionally, in need of reform. Human laws are, of course, imperfect, just as we ourselves are fragile and imperfect. Until recent times, all law in our country, to some degree, reflected our relationship with God and our relationship with our fellow human beings, including our own selves. If our human laws failed in either of these dimensions, the argument went they would fail to promote the common good that all law must surely strive to uphold. By contrast, laws that passed these two tests stood the test of time for the good of the whole community, even non-believers. Law that truly serves the common good will surely encourage us to respect ourselves and to love our neighbours. Without these two elements, our society would be, in the Christian view, closed in on itself and become a contradiction in terms, individuals with little or no connection to the commonweal. And so I'd like to pray for those who make Scotland's laws that the Lord may bless them with justice and temperance, with courage and with prudence. And may all Scots and the strangers who live among us be blessed on the way to a more harmonious peace and a more balanced prosperity in our beloved country. Amen. <clears throat> 